Welcome to Madison Public Library in Madison, Ohio's Theater of the Mind, Shakespeare Edition. Today, we begin with Act 4, Scene 3 of William Shakespeare's famous tragedy, Macbeth. To hear more of Macbeth, like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. This final scene takes place in England, where Malcolm has been since his father was murdered. Malcolm is Bailey B, and Macduff is Melanie L. The doctor is Vivian B, and Ross is Morgan B. Let us seek out some desolate shade, and there weep our sad bosoms empty. Let us rather hold fast the mortal sword, and like good men bestride our downfallen birthdom, each new morn, new windows howl, new orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven on the face, that it resounds as if felt with Scotland and yelled out like syllable of dollar. What I believe, I'll wail. What no believe, and what I redress. As I shall find the time to friend, I will. What you have spoke, it may be so purchase. This tyrant, whose sole name blisters our tongues, was once thought honest. You have loved him well. He hath not touched you yet. I am young, but something you may deserve of him through me, and wisdom to offer up a weak, poor, innocent lamb to appease an angry god. I am not treacherous. But Macbeth is. A good and virtuous nature may recoil an imperial charge, but I shall crave your pardon. That which you are, my thoughts cannot transpose. Angels are bright still, though the brightest fell. Though all things foul would wear the brows of grace, yet grace must still look so. I have lost my hopes. Purchase even there where I did find my doubts. Why in that rawless left you wife and child, those precious motives, those strong knots of love. Without leave taking, I pray you, let not my jealous seas be your dishonors, but mine own safeties. You may be rightly just, whatever I shall think. Bleed, bleed, poor country, great tyranny, lay thou thy basis sure, for goodness dare not check thee, where thou thy wrongs the title is afeard. Fare thee well, Lord, I would not be the villain that thou thinkst, for the whole space that's in the tyrant's grasp and the rich east to boot. Be not offended. I seek not as in absolute fear of you. I think our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps, it bleeds, and each new day a gash is added to her wounds. I think withdrawal there would be hands uplifted in my right. And here from gracious England, I have offer of goodly thousands, but for all this, when I shall tread upon the tyrant's hand, or wear it on my sword, yet my poor country shall more vices than it had before, more suffer, more sodry ways than ever, by him that shall succeed. What should he be? It is myself, I mean, in whom I know all the particulars of vice so grafted, that when they shall be opened, black Macbeth will seem as pure as snow, and the poor state esteem him as the lamb being compared with my confineless harms. Not in the legions of horrid hell can come a devil more damned in evils to top Macbeth. I grant him bloody, luxurious, arvacious, false, deceitful, sudden, malicious, smacking of every sin that has a name. But there's no bottom, none. In my voluptuous, your wives, your daughters, your matrons and your maids could not fill up the cistern of my lust and my desire. All continent impedious would or bear, that did oppose my will. Better Macbeth than such one to reign. Boundless intemperance in nature is a tyranny. It hath been the untimely emptying of the happy throne and fall of many kings. But fear not yet to take upon you what is yours. You may convey your pleasures in a spacious plenty, and yet seem cold the time you may so hoodwink. We have willing dames enough. There cannot be that vulture in you to devour so many as will to greatness dedicate themselves, finding it so inclined. With this there grows, in my most ill-composed affections, such a statulous arise that I was king. I should cut off the nobles for their lands, desire his jewels and this other's house, 
and my more having would be a sauce to make me hunger more that I should forge quarrels unjust against the good and loyal, destroying them for wealth. This avarice sticks deeper, grows with more pernicious root than summer-seeming lust, and it hath been the sword of our slain kings. Yet do not fear, Scotland hath poisons to fill up your will. Of your mere own, all these are portable, with other graces weighed. But I have none. The king becoming graces, as justice, Verity, temperance, stableness, bounty, perseverance, mercy, lowliness, devotion, patience, courage, fortitude, I have no relish of them, but abound in the division of each several crime. Acting in many ways, nay, had I power, I should pour the sweet milk of concord into hell, uproar the universal peace, confound all unity on earth. Oh, Scotland, Scotland! If such a one be fit to govern, speak. I am as I have spoken. Fit to govern, no, not to live. O nation miserable with an untitled tyrant bloody sceptered, when shalt thou see thy wholesome days again, since that the truest issue of thy throne by his own interdiction stands accursed and does blaspheme his breed? Thy royal father was a most sainted king, The queen that bore thee oftener upon her knees than on her feet, died every day she lived. Fare thee well, these evils thou repeatest upon thyself have banished me from Scotland. O my breast, thy hope ends here. Macduff, this noble passion, child of integrity, hath my soul wiped the black scrubs, reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honor. Devilish Macbeth, by many of these trains, hath sought to win me into his power, and modernist wisdom plucks me from over credulous haste. But God above, deal between thee and me, for even now I put myself in thy direction, and unspeak mine own distraction. Here abjure the taints and blames I laid upon myself, for strangers to my nature. I am yet unknown to woman, never has forsworn. Scarcely converted was my own, at time I broke my faith would not betray the devil to his fellow and delight, no less in truth than life. My first false speaking was this upon myself. What am I truly? Is thine my poor countries to command? Whither indeed? Before thy here approach, old seaward, with 10,000 warlike men already at point, was setting forth. Now we'll together, and the chances of goodness be like our wardened quarrel. Why are you so silent? Such welcome and unwelcome things at once, tis hard to reconcile. Well, more anon, comes forth the king's forth, I pray you. Ay, sir, there are a crew of wretched souls that stay his cure. Their malady convinces the great assay of art, but at his touch such sanctity hath heaven given his hand that they presently amend. Thank you, doctor. What's the disease he means? Tis called the evil. A most miraculous work in this good king, which often, since my here remained in England, I have seen him do. How he solicits heaven, himself best known. But strangely visited people, all swollen and ursulous, pitiful to the eye. The mere despair of surgery he cures. Hanging a golden stamp about their necks, put on with holy prayers. And tis spoken to the succeeding royal he leaves, the healing medication. With this strange virtue, he hath heavenly gift of prophecy, and sundry blessings hang out his throne that speaks him full of grace. See, who comes here? My countryman, but yet I know him not. My ever gentle cousin, welcome hither. I know him now. Good God! Bet times remove the means that makes us strangers. Sir, amen. Stand Scotland where it did? Alas, poor country, almost afraid to know itself. It cannot be called our mother, but our grave. Where nothing, but who knows nothing, is once seen to smile. Where sighs and groans and shrieks that rend the air are made, not marked. Where violent sorrows seem a modest ecstasy, and dead men's cow, they're scarce asked for who, 
and good men lives expire before the flowers of their camps, dying or ere they sicken. O oh, relation, too nice, and yet too true. What's the newest grief? That of an hour's age doth hiss the speaker. Each minute seems a new one. How does my wife? Why well. And all my children? Well too. The tyrant has not battered at their peace? No, they were well at peace when I did leave them. But not a niggard of your speech, how ghost. When I came hither to transport the tidings, which I have heavily borne, that there ran a rumor of many worthy fellows that were out, which was my belief witnessed the rather, for that I saw the tyrant's power afoot. Now is the time of help. Your eye in Scotland would create soldiers, make our women fight, to doff their desired distress. Be it their comfort. We are coming thither. Gracious England hath lent us good seaward and ten thousand men. An older and a better soldier none than Christendom gives out. Would I could answer this comfort with the like, but I have words that would be howled in the desert air, their hearing not latch them. What concern they? The general cause? Or is it a fee grief due to some single breast? No mind that's honest, but in it shares some woe. Through the main part pertains to you alone. If it be mine, keep it not from me. Quickly, let me have it. Let not your ears despise my tongue forever, which shall possess them with the heaviest sound that ever yet they heard. Hmm. I guess at it. Your castle is surprised, your wife and babies savagely slaughtered, to relate the manner where on the quarry these murdered deer to add the death of you. Merciful heaven, what man! Near pull your hat upon your brows, give sorrow words, the grief that does not speak, whispers or fraught heart and bids it break. My children too? Wife, children, servants, all that could be found. And I must be from thence, my wife killed too? I have said. Be comforted. Let make us medicines of our great revengeance to cure this deadly grief. He has no children. All my pretty ones? Did you say all? Oh, hell kite, all? What? All my pretty chickens and their dam at one fell swoop? Dispute it like a man. I shall do so, but I must also feel it as a man. I cannot but remember such things were that were most precious to me. Did heaven look on and would not take their part? Sinful Macduff, they were all struck for thee. Not that I am, not for their own demerits, but for mine, fell slaughter on their souls. Heaven rest them now. Be this the weight stone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger, blunt not the heart, enrage it. Oh, I could play the woman with mine eyes, and braggart with my tongue. But gentle heavens cut short all intermission, front to front, Bring thou this fiend of Scotland and myself, within my sword's length set him. If he scape, heaven forgive him too. This tune goes manly. Come, go we to the king. Our power is ready. Our lack is nothing but our leave. Macbeth is ripe for shaking, and the powers above. Put on their instruments. Receive what cheer you may. The night is long that never finds the day. And this was Act 4, Scene 3 of Macbeth. Thank you to Bailey, Melanie, Morgan, and Vivian. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for the next scene of Macbeth. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest.